All right, so welcome everyone uh, to this uh, class, which is essentially a, a new idea that I've had, um, an iOS third-party tool roundup, um, essentially talking about apps and other things that are available. Uh, it's very common that we have classes to teach people how to use EFT and EVEMON and all sort of the major uh, PC applications, but some of us don't use PCs, and a lot of us like to have our uh, apps on the go. Uh, so I thought talking about uh, those would be interesting as well. Uh, my name is Lilira Rim. I am a long-time teacher in EVUNI now. I uh, recently celebrated my first anniversary in the game itself, uh, right along with the game's birthday. Uh, still going strong, still enjoying it very much, still glad to be offering classes every month. Uh, I am recording this class. Uh, feel free to speak up if I have any mic issues. Um, we are in a free-for-all room. Um, I definitely won't get upset uh, if people... Want to, chi- want to chime in or interrupt me, um, but as long as we don't get to talking over each other very much. I'm keeping an eye out in lecture.e-uni for any questions. Um, if you're not in the game, you're feel free to type in uh, the Mumble uh, chat as well if you have a question you don't want to say out loud. Um, and otherwise, we'll just get going here. All right, so if you are in lecture.e-uni, I'll ask you to put an I into the chat uh, if you do, in fact, have an iOS device uh, available to you right now. Android's fine, too. I don't judge. <laughs> all right, so everyone that's putting down Android, I'm marking your names down so that you can offer an Android class next month. How's that? Alrighty. Uh, okay, so I, I only have iOS devices at this time, um, and I don't even have a smartphone, actually. I still have a old Nokia flip phone because uh, Finland, okay? Um <laughs> But it's getting on its last legs. Uh, so what I'll be doing today is just running through a collection of the apps that I have installed, uh, talking about uh, basically how I use them. Uh, I would credit probably I would probably credit Neocom, uh, the, one of the biggest apps for iOS, um, for almost keeping me into the game. Um, just being able to stay engaged with it, uh, spending a lot of time when I'm at school or whatever. Uh, just getting into the game and actually having an app I can constantly fiddle with and look at my stuff and my characters and my skill plan and my assets and especially the fitting tool. I cannot even count how many hours I've spent just playing around with the fitting tool on this app. It's just, you know, Eve, 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 uh, EFT is, is fine, but this this app has just been my dream for the last, for the last little while. Uh, so easy to use and just a lot of fun to, to mess around with. Um, so, since I'm starting with Neocom, I guess I might as well continue with it. Uh, one of the problems with Neocom that I think a lot of the people, certainly posting on the author's blog and uh, giving comments in the actual uh, app store, uh, are that the author has a tendency to change things uh, very, very frequently and unprompted. So, essentially, every major revision that he does is a complete overhaul of the UI, and the consensus seems to be that it's getting worse uh, every revision. And certainly the most recent version um, has plagued with a lot of crashes. It has a lot of great features, but it's, it's, it's plagued with a lot of crashes. It's plagued with um, uh, some slowdown. Um, essentially, I, it's, it's getting harder to use, which is really a shame, because I would love to promote it more than I do. I would love to be able to give them another donation to say, you know, keep this going. But it's just it just seems to be going in the wrong direction, and he doesn't seem to be very open to feedback. I've never had him respond to any kind of email um, and I don't know what he does with his blog, but uh, what I'll do is I'll just post some links uh, in the channel here uh, to share that. So the original name was uh, Eve Universe before he changed it to Neocom. And there's also the link for the iTunes store. Uh, probably that works best in another game browser. But, uh, oh, that's also probably a Canadian store link, but it should redirect you to whatever your local store is. Um, again, one of the issues with the Apple iTunes Store, of course, is that uh, if it's not, if an app is not set up to be for sale in your region, you're not able to access it, unfortunately. Um, so certainly, some of these may have may have those issues. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, if you do find out if there's any issues, if you try something that doesn't work, uh, feel free to uh, type that in chat, and uh, it'd be interesting to sort of summarize that in terms of what's available in what regions. So another thing that I'll be doing is actually taking uh, screenshots of my iPad here. And uh, as we go along, it won't be instant, but uh, as we go along, I'll be uh, putting those screenshots into a Dropbox folder. 
And as soon as that, that folder populates with any significant number of images, I'll uh, link that in chat. And then if you don't have the ability to follow along, um, you'll at least be able to uh, sort of see the basic UI interface of things as, as we go. Just as, just as a peek, if, it's, if for any reason you can't do it yourself or you're not willing to pay for the apps immediately, if they cost anything. All right, so I'll run through the basic features of Neocom. Uh, one of the best things about uh, this particular app is how automated it is, uh, how intelligent it will work, work, for, uh, work with your Eve client, uh, or rather your, uh, your Eve account when you log in. Um, you have the option when you're importing your API keys, and of course the more features you want to use, the more open your API key has to be. And if you're concerned at all about those kinds of features, um, then you don't have to make a decision about uh, what you're willing to share uh, potentially with the author. You, know, you, you never know. It's, it's a closed system. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, Neocom is that you can actually import it uh, through Safari while you're actually on your device. Um, so there's a way for... There's two options. You're able to connect to it over Wi-Fi uh, by, by your PC if you have it on your computer, if you want to basically import the data there. Uh, but actually, if you, if you click the Import from Safari button, uh, if you set up, uh, if you if you log in via Safari uh, and you refresh the page that has all your API keys, it'll actually give you a, a third button that you wouldn't normally see—a button called Install. And essentially, that is a way for the browser to say, "All right, I want to pull this back into the app that's there." Um, so it's really nice. You don't even have to go to the steps of copy and pasting, uh, which I thought is is really impressive. That's a nice way to to sort of easily set up your characters. Um, and certainly if you have more than more than one or two accounts, uh, get really tedious copying and pasting all those things uh, on the touch screen. So that's a great way to set things up. Um, currently, I am using the, the latest version, version 4. Uh, if you happen to have version 3 or version 2, uh, I would strongly advise that you actually keep it, uh, make a backup of that particular uh, .ipa file, and that way you're always able to go back to an earlier version. Um, as I say, the, the most recent version, a lot of people aren't happy with it. It's unknown sort of what he'll uh, go for in the future. But um, as long as you have your copy of your IPA, you can always essentially replace it and put an older version on it. Um, in terms of what you're losing out on, other than sort of the latest features, you're really only losing on the database. So, for example, you wouldn't uh, see things like the new, the new painted ships or new modules, that kind of thing. Um, some of the stats might be wrong. It took a while for him to update things like warp speed. Uh, but really, it's in terms of being functional, being a way to check your mail, being able to do everything else you can do, old versions are totally fine. And um, just because you know, just because the uh, the feedback has not been great on the new ones, I suggest, I suggest you try and keep your old ones if you can, or even dig through a time machine backup if you have one. And I'm going to go through just basically top to bottom. Uh, so under the character sheet section, uh, which is, again, a fairly new feature with version 4. Uh, it's really nice. It gives you sort of a full summary of what you would expect to see in your character sheet tab. Um, everything including your bloodline, your current skill points, what you're training, um, security status. It's, it's nice that it's, it's got, it's got almost everything you need now. Um, even, even down to your current location, your ship, uh, and nicely, uh, summarizing how many days you have remaining on your subscription. Uh, another brand new feature which shows here is the, uh, the character remapping. It's essentially taken all the tools available from uh, Evemon, uh, basically to predict what is the best uh, skill remap for your for your current character uh, based on the plan you've entered. And he's actually got that feature implemented now, which is again nice. It's nice to see. Okay, oh, well, I'd be doing a lot better if I could put eight more points into perception. Well, <laughs> I knew that before, but it's nice to have the math to support it. Down in the, uh, the skills section, uh, I would say the skills uh, planner has improved quite a lot, uh, certainly since version 2. It used to be quite a bit, basically a poor use of screen real estate, uh, but he's really tightened up the design with version 3 and version 4. And it's really nice just to be able to flip through and be able to you know, tag on, you know, I want this skill at 3, this skill at 4. Uh, if I want you know, this advanced skill, it automatically adds all your sub-requirements. Uh, and I and I remember you know, I used to fiddle around with monitoring uh, monitoring that sort of on a daily basis when I was away from my computer for a while. And again, another really nice thing of you can just constantly fiddle around, rearrange your plan uh, just just by the touch screen. 
So again, really, really strong uh, advantage for using a, a, an iOS tool for that. He's added a few new features uh, for how you can filter your skills. Uh, you basically group it from my skills, ones you do have, uh, all skills for a complete list, not known in can train. And that's essentially the same in, in trying to mimic what the character sheet skills uh, subtab is with just a little bit more flexibility. Uh, the email uh, section for Neocom has improved quite a lot. Uh, it used to be just inbox and sent, and everything was lumped together. And with the current version, it actually groups things into your mailing lists. Uh, so you can actually filter and collapse uh, things that you don't want to see. Like you can keep all your court mails hidden and just watch your, uh, watch your regular uh, mailing lists that you're interested in. Uh, of course, there's no ways to actually compose anything at this point. Um, uh, probably with uh, the changes that they're working from the API into Crest, um, they may start allowing uh, out-of-game things like that, but for the most part, you still have to log in through eGate or log into the game to actually compose mails. Uh, but it's a nice way to keep up uh, keep up with reading things. Uh, the calendar events also works uh, a great deal better now than it used to. Uh, the next group of... Uh, Essentially, database information uh, in the app is very useful. Again, if you're if you're doing your own kind of development, if you're doing uh, anything with uh, creating your own API tool, um, it's important to know like essentially how the how the database of Eve works, what they, what we call the static dump, and that's essentially how everything in the game is able to be used by third party tools. And the nice thing about uh, having this database here is it's all nicely organized, nicely icons. And as soon as you end up looking at the individual item, it tells you the ID right there. Um, and those IDs are really crucial if you're actually developing uh, anything uh, to use to use the API. Uh, for those of you who remember how the certificate system used to work, uh, Neocom also offers what is essentially uh, the same basics of the uh, certificate system, um, along with uh, sort of the... UI update for the mastery system. So it's kind of an interesting blend how, you know, if you're interested in what the old core certificates were, you can still look that up and uh, and, and be able to sort of plan your skills that way. Uh, the markets is very straightforward, just a complete mimic of the in-game markets. Uh, I think we have, yeah, right down to infantry gear, so you can look at all that wonderful uh, dust stuff that we can actually purchase. So again, just making use of the database dump. And the NPC uh, section is quite useful if you are getting into much more complicated um, missions and things where you're actually looking for, okay, what's actually going to appear in a ghost site? Um, what's going to appear in an incursion? And there are some, some rats that are pretty, pretty sparsely seen. Uh, it also includes things like all the, co- all the, uh, the Cosmos uh, rats, and you can actually look up the, uh, the Concord uh, guys as well, I think, here somewhere. And it essentially groups things to where they'll appear, so things that'll appear in asteroid belts, things that'll appear in dead space, uh, drone sections, uh, faction warfare missions. Um, so if you're interested in looking at what you're actually going to be fighting against through missions, uh, it's pretty interesting. It does uh, give as much data as is, is available. Uh, so you can see, for example, that a Garista sentry will give, uh, let's see, what's it say here? Uh, 1,055 uh, thermal damage uh, at approximately 211 DPS. Uh, so if you're seriously into EVE survival, uh, this information can be quite useful. I uh, can't verify exactly how, how current it is, but one assumes that it's all based on the databases that CCP gives us. All right, so next down in the section, we've got the fitting tool. Uh, so again, this is, if you have any experience with, uh, with EFT or Pytha, you'll probably be very familiar with uh, how the fitting tool works. Uh, one of the nice things that uh, Neocom offers is you're able to actually browse fits on uh, from the community or from Battle Clinic. Um, <laughs> whether or not you have a particular opinion on Battle Clinic, I guess is up to you. But uh, it does have, offer ways to search uh, different things. It looks like there are currently 48,000 uh, loadouts listed under Community Fits, and uh, I'm pretty sure that that is a different source than Battle Clinic. All righty. So one of the one of the nice features that I actually first started when I was uh, when I was setting up my my own player corp 
was uh, Neocom actually lets you do uh, essentially theory crafting of uh, player owned starbase and, and station fits. Um, so that's really nice, and that's something that's a little bit harder to come by in terms of web tools. Uh, so you can actually plot out, okay, I can afford a small Kalendari station. I want to fit a couple of these uh, mobile laboratories to it. And it's, again, it's just a really nice interface for actually plotting out, you know, what your power grid needs are, what your CPU limits are, uh, setting up resists and defenses. Uh, so, again, I, I, I spent probably a couple weeks sort of tinkering with that as I was setting up uh, setting up an industrial park. Uh, creating a new ship fit is really easy, just to browse through the list. I'm um, just going to set up a fit for a flycatcher here. And aside from any issues with the current version being a little bit on the laggy side, um, it is really excellent in terms of how he's improved uh, sort of the intelligent selection of modules. So, for example, if you tap into a high slot, it's only going to give you module choices that will work in a high slot. And you just filter down into uh, whatever you want for whether it's, uh, let's see here, turrets, interdiction. So again, it's it's nice how it's nice how he's he's used devoted resources to making the fit tool even easier to use. You know, it's just the, the lag gets to be a little bit annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my feature requests is actually a way to uh, offline things like rigs. Um, so just walking through the basics of the tool, if you haven't tried to use it, uh, you have a bunch of different ways to sort of tweak your fit. So you can fill up your slots, you can delete things that you've added, uh, but instead of deleting it, you can also just put it offline. So exactly like you would in the game, and I'm sure very much like EOT, you're able to just tweak around and say, okay, how much cap am I using when this tool, when this uh, module is active versus inactive versus offline? So you're able to plan a lot. Um, what, I, what I do wish is if there was a way to uh, tweak the rig slots, uh, essentially if you want to see the change in how a rig applies to your ship, you actually have to delete it, and then you have to add it back. So that's just a very minor convenience thing. In terms of information that's not available in-game, uh, typically knowing your drone range is difficult with the uh, in-game UI, uh, but it's listed right here. And again, this is all... Very, very standard, very familiar to anyone who uses EFT. Some of the more advanced features include you can uh, also set up your implants, and you can also essentially fleet yourself up with other fits that you have. Uh, again, very common feature, but if it's, if it's sort of your first time, if you tend not to use the PC tools a lot, you know, just having this to play around with you know, while you're on the bus or just while you're bored in a situation, uh, it's, it, it can be quite a lot of fun. Like I say, it, it really it really hooked me. It really got me addicted, and I, I definitely credit it with keeping me in the game uh, a lot more engaged. Uh, other features, the kill reports, uh, again, work, work pretty reliably uh, based on what's in game. Uh, I'll get down to the sections uh, from assets to industry jobs. So... I will, I'll start with assets because this is kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, assets are very difficult to deal with in EVE Online. Um, I've written a wiki page basically about how to manage them. Uh, one of the core problems with the in-game uh, search abilities is that it doesn't search inside containers. But if you're using an API tool, really any API tool, you don't have that restriction. So you are, in fact, able to search inside containers, inside hangars, inside your ships, inside your ship's cargo, um, it really is excellent in how it uh, is able to let you find things that you may have lost. And I mean, I know other characters who have you know, literally like over a thousand ships in their collection and trying to remember where something might be in their cargo uh, at some random station. Like it's just, this is the only way you're ever going to find it. So I really recommend API tools for having that kind of power. Uh, let's see, monitoring market orders. If you're a station trader or a seller, uh, really nice to be able to flip through um, essentially what you have active. Uh, it can be a little bit a little bit um, tricky to, to figure out the lingo. Like, for the example, expired, does that mean expired I've sold it or expired it hasn't sold? Um, so you actually have to decipher the UI a little bit uh, in terms of whether or not it still has a quantity listed. Um, that comes with a little bit of experience, but, you know, it's definitely a, a point of confusion uh, for a lot of people who start it. 
Uh, being able to monitor your contracts, I think, is, again, an, another extremely useful tool. Um, you don't have to log into the game to find out whether someone has accepted or rejected a contract. Uh, I can see I've got a couple of couriers still in progress. Uh, but, again, I was able to, to use this to good effect last night, which basically determines that I logged in and then completed another contract based on seeing one that was filled. So super, super useful there. Uh, wallet transactions and wallet journal, again, exactly like you'd see in-game. Um, again, with current version 4 of Neocom, I would say that it's it, this, the space is not as efficient as it used to be. Uh, but it's nice. It's, it's still color-coded. You get your red and your green. and It's fairly easy to see what's going on. You don't really get any search abilities like you would uh, in-game, but I'm sure that's something that he's working on. Industry jobs is also quite useful. Um, industry jobs is a good example of if you have if you set up your your API tool here to have a cork key as well as uh, a character key. Um, this is where it really becomes handy because you're able to actually see at a glance not only what you have but what is your what is your starbase actually uh, set up for what does it have um, when are, when are the when are the jobs coming due. So as long as you have access to the correct keys to put in, to put into Neocom uh, or any API tool, it's really nice to be able to just glance at that and, and see how things are progressing. So I, I just view them as an efficiency, uh, an efficiency booster. And down at the bottom, we have just an RSS news feed. Most of the most of the serious apps will have a news feed, I think, just to stay, uh, just to keep people interested, keep people using the app. Uh, because the author is, uh, see, I'm pretty sure the author is Russian, and uh, because of that, he does have a, a Russian section in the news as well. So reading, getting, getting your daily Eve Russian news is uh, honestly pretty interesting as well. And finally, the uh, at the very bottom, we've got the About tab, which just gives you the current static data export version, uh, all the banks and all the summary information there. A good comment from Aurora in the chat. Uh, yeah, you, essentially, if you if you know if you know your stuff too well, if you know your collection so well, you don't get to enjoy all those crazy mistakes of buying ten of the wrong thing. It's absolutely right. Uh, and towards the bottom, there's an option for remove ads, which is basically just a, a easy way to make a small donation, get rid of those ads at the bottom. And because I, I will talk about the settings very briefly, um, at version four of this app has changed quite a bit. Um, right now, he has uh, set up the option to use iCloud storage, and I can tell from test- I can tell you from testing and experience that uh, essentially the app sort of has two states, basically with iCloud storage turned on and with it turned off. So, if you have any desire at all to sort of keep your keep your things separate, um, you can actually toggle this. And of course, it may completely change next version. But essentially, if your fittings all disappear it's probably because this setting has been toggled. If your characters disappear, if your fittings disappear, it means it's not checking the cloud. Um, so if you turn that back on, they will magically reappear, and it actually stores those separately. Um, so just in case uh, you have any reason to use that or you know, something goes crazy and you're not able to connect to iCloud, um, I found that uh, that is the cause of that. So really interesting new feature. I'm not sure if it's causing any slowdown at all, um, but uh, really nice to have because, again, huge problem with updating to new versions of Neocom is that your fittings get destroyed. Like, I've, I've, I've complained about that before, um, and there's, it's very difficult to back them up. You can export them one at a time, but, you know, last time I had uh, probably probably 75 fits saved, and a lot of them were pretty good, and you update the version, and they're all gone. So, again, just a, just a source of frustration which is, I guess, pretty minor for an app that I basically donated five dollars for. But nonetheless, at least it's fun to uh, to make them fresh again with your new skills. Uh, I use uh, Emon pretty regularly for just monitoring my notifications when I have twenty four hours left or four hours left. And a new feature that he's added for this version as well is uh, we've got uh, basically a ticker for ISK exchange rate. We've got a ticker for minerals. And he also does a conversion for roughly how much, uh, roughly how much one billion ISK is. All right, so that's all I'll talk about with uh, Neocom. Uh, if anyone has any thoughts while I load up the next app, uh, feel free to speak up. 
All right, next app I'll talk about uh, briefly here is called FlySafe. Uh, we've we've uh, spent most of the time talking about uh, talking about Neocom, and all the rest should be fairly quick by comparison. Uh, FlySafe. Uh, the reason I keep this app is it's a very nice way of kind of monitoring what data that you would see in the star map. So in terms of active jumps, uh, kills of rats and glares and pods, uh, actually having all that information uh, right up front. Uh, it's really nice to see kind of what your active systems are. If there's been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of activity, uh, certainly the systems that I live in, I've been able to sort of track activity um, more and more as I as I play. Uh, for low sec systems, it's a good way to monitor. You know, hey, is there anything crazy going on in Tom at the moment? Uh, null sec, anything like that? Um, I've noticed that uh, essentially uh, Stackmon the uh, the high sec system outside of the LSC usually has usually is more dangerous than the appellant itself, uh, so that's a good testament to how the LSC keeps things in check. Uh, and it's a great way just for just for curiosity's sake to see you know how busy systems like Jita or the trade hubs are. Uh, so right now we've got uh, equal almost an equal number of jumps, 2,700 jumps in Jita. Uh, in the last little bits and 2,500 in the mark. So, fairly busy day. <laughs> so, that is the key thing that I use FlySafe for. Um, it does have kind of the full set of uh, options for if you want to look at skills. It has a rather nice ship gallery if you want to look at pretty pictures of ships that don't move. Um, and then you can also uh, add tie your accounts and have that information. But mostly I use this app for its selection of news feeds and just being able to look at a system. Uh, I want to see how active it is. Oh, the uh, last thing that it does is a really nice list of alliances. <clears throat> so if you're interested in seeing, you know, what's the what's the changes? Like, you know, how I was essentially watching, uh, I remember when uh, when Test was doing its fail cascade, just sort of watching the statistics go, watching it change places as it is. But, um, yeah, see here, Brave Collective, they're up to rank number four. Uh, lots of stuff going on in the last year, for sure. And Tess still down there at number 10. No, it's still in the top 10. <laughs> Come on, some more classes, Aurora, if you want to see Titans. We uh, we got Titan Bridge last week. Pretty cool. All right, I'll move on to the next app here. Uh, switch gears for the miners in the group. And, of course, by miners, I don't mean those under 18. I mean people who make their money shooting rocks. All right, so here is a link for a very useful tool called ISCAM3. Um, this version is, if you happen to have iOS 6, uh, you'll actually see a different version of this app available than you would if it's iOS 7. Um, he's updated uh, to be a full, a, full, uh, a full iOS 7 app that also works in iPads. Uh, previously, it was uh, vertically orientated for your phone, and it looked all pixelated and blocky. But uh, the new version works quite nicely. And what this tool essentially does, which, you know, again, a lot of other online tools uh, tend to do, is tell you what the most valuable ore you could be mining is. Uh, so in terms of, not necessarily as per hour, but in terms of your cargo hold, um, basically the ratio of things, units that you can sell to the space that you can have, and this is what I look at any time someone, uh, someone in chat asks, okay, which, which ore should I be selling? Is it still Scordite? Is it whatever? And, you know, the answer is almost always massive Scordite uh, for high-sec apps, uh, for high-sec ores. But uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the low-sec and the null-sec ones can, can rotate quite a bit. And especially as I do most of my mining in wormholes now, um, because you don't necessarily get uh, the modified, the, the, plus t- the, fl- the plus 5, the plus 10 ores in a wormhole. Um, it's, it's sort of important to see, okay, well, if I uh, choose Arcan ore, I'm actually losing money compared to this one, but, you know, again, I always want Arcan ore, so. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, very, very useful, especially if you're into low-sec and null-sec ores, because those tend to fluctuate quite a bit more. Uh, compared to just making money right off the high side. And built in are just the four main train hubs. Very simple app, very easy to use. Definitely recommend it. I'll just dig up a link for the next one here. Uh, the OR one, that is ISCM3. 
uh, the link right above. I'm sorry that the links don't actually list everything quite clearly, um, but uh, just in the middle you see ISKM3. Okay, I'm looking up an app called EveMine. I've been relying a little bit on the you know, people who bought this app also bought a uh, feature that the iTunes store has, which is actually a really good way to discover stuff. And there's always the possibility that apps get taken off the store, of course. No, I'm not seeing a current link for that one. I'll come back to it if I can find it. All right, so in that case, then we'll go to Eve Trader. Okay, so I've linked uh, the app store of Eve Trader. Um, I really enjoyed this app from the perspective of keeping track of my total wealth across my characters. Um, you know, trying to maintain, all right, I've got you know this many this many stations full of this much stuff, and you know what about my ships? What about my liquid is? So this is a really nice way to kind of keep track of your assets. Uh, very very useful if you are a station trader or region trader, but I think generally useful just to know sort of where your character is at. Uh, especially if you've been playing for a few years, you may sort of have lost track. It's like, well, you know, I just think about my liquid disk and not about how much, you know, not really realizing that you may have 15 billion in assets. Um, but uh, certainly comes in useful and a very easy app to use. Again, just importing your basic API stuff. Uh, every time you launch it, it'll refresh. Uh, it does take quite a while to pull everything because it's looking at uh, everything from your contracts to uh, your market orders. But uh, really nice uh, selection of features. Uh, it looks pretty good on an iPad as well. Uh, it's kind of sized for uh, for uh, the iPad or sorry the iPhone, but um, definitely has uh, definitely has a lot of appeal to it. If you're looking at unlocking your features, the price for this one is about uh, two dollars. It looks like. Uh, let's see here. Use what I can tell you. The reports are quite nice, just in terms of uh, seeing your buy volume, your sell volume. So again, if you're if you're really active in trading, this is this is what this goal is. Uh, it does also have a shopping cart app, which I've never really caught on to. Um, it's actually a, it's a little, little bit tedious to use. Um, I've seen much better shopping cart apps done uh, online on the web, but um, you know it, it it does have that option. But uh, mostly, I just like looking at my total wealth number, and because I don't actually lose a lot of ships, my total wealth number just kind of stays the same. But uh, certainly, the liquidus gets shuffled around a lot. And again, this is a really great app if you have a corporation of your own to manage, uh, being able to sort of look at that wealth independently of your own character, um, being able to see automatically what's in all your corp wallets, that kind of thing. That's, that's really, really useful, um, especially you know, when, uh, when build time comes around. And yeah, if you don't actually update this app very often, it can take you know, probably about, I think, 10, 15 minutes sometimes for it to really do a full full refresh of everything it keeps track of. So it is keep, keeping track of quite a lot of stuff. All right, next app I've linked is called Nanocom, uh, which is very, very simply put, I would say, a competitor to Neocom, uh, which I think is really good, uh, considering the feedback and uh, other things I've said about Neocom before. Um, it's, it's, it, it's really good that we now have, have competition. And as I said in the thread, kind of a challenger to the throne. Uh, for iOS apps. So I haven't uh, done a significant amount of uh, playing around with this one, um, but as far as I can tell, everything from the UI to the basic functionality, uh, very, very similar. Um, uh, Neocom is actually uh, is actually made available uh, on the, uh, I forget if it's, you know, forget if it's Git, GitHub or not, but there is a code repository for it, so I mean, it is available for people to fork and do other things if they wanted to, uh, which is kind of interesting. You know, if I had the skills, I could probably fix a lot of the problems that I personally have with it. Uh, but that's for you know, a completely different discussion for actually developing iOS apps. Um, but uh, functionally, uh, very, very similar. And it also has uh, different ways to pay as well. Like if you have, it basically charges you uh, based on removing advertising and then upgrading for how many account slots you have. So at a dollar each, you know, may, may or may not be useful for you. But uh, functionally, very good. Um, doesn't seem to have the same kind of fitting tools, the same kind of real utilities. But as far as actually monitoring your character, uh, like if you want uh, sort of a parallel to EveMon on your iOS app, uh, I think this is a good option. 
And like I said, if you're using Neocom, the UI is very similar. All right, so next one we're going to look at is called Mentat. And Mentat is another mining useful uh, one as well. Um, it's, I believe it's made by Artem, who is the author of Neocom, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, I'm there with it. Uh, yeah, as soon as I see, every time I, I see Mentat, I'm like, oh, is, this, is this a Fallout app? Am I, am I in the wrong place? Like, no. But uh, this is a, a way to calculate uh, refining and efficiency, uh, doing things with your, with, your, uh, with your skills and station that you're at. Um, so really useful, again, for industrialists and miners to figure out what they're doing. I, I would imagine this is going to change drastically, uh, assuming he's keeping it up to date after Kronos. So, you know, enjoy it while you can. Uh, very visually appealing, I would say, and uh, and definitely useful if this is the kind of thing that you have to uh, stay awake at night calculating uh, to get your efficiency up, which sometimes you do if you're trying to make a profit. All right, the next one I have linked here is called Epic for Eve, and in this case, the PI is capital because this is your planetary interaction companion. Um, I've been wanting to try this for a little while. I actually only got a a uh, new uh, credit for my iTunes account yesterday, so I've not had a lot of time uh, to play around with it. But in terms of you know planning, like everybody everybody says that you know planetary interaction would be so great as an iPad app, uh, and the answer is you know just take that take that junk out of Eve and, you know and just put it on a tablet, uh, which of course won't work, but. Uh, this is a really nice little tool uh, from what I've done of it, and just a way to, again, sort of keep track of your timers, uh, when you need to actually refresh things, it looks like. Um, you know, setting up individual goals here for what you want to produce. Uh, there are a tremendous, tremendous number of excellent uh, online web tools for planetary interaction. Uh, but, you know, again, like, what do you do when you're on the go? And you know, does it look pretty? And you know, it's, it's amazing how much people care about planetary interaction. It's really nice that you know you have all these you know, attractive programs to use. Oh, more uh, more uh, testimonials from Aurora there. Make sure you leave a review on the iTunes store. Uh, yeah, really appreciate that. So yeah, I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit deeper. I'm looking at getting out of uh, HiSec PI on my industrial list and into null PI. So I reckon that will be really advantageous to have something I can really tinker with. Uh, and again, it's it, because it's nice and it's approachable and you basically, you know, touch screen and swiping, like it makes it a little more approachable. Like reading a tutorial on planetary interaction takes kind of like the better part of an hour. Uh, so just being able to fiddle around with it and see what you can do. Uh, you know, at least at least makes it feel like more of a game as opposed to a chore. So there's there's a lot to be said for that. But yeah, really really pretty app, really nice to use. All right, so just for completeness, I will also link IEV status. Um, have not had any chance to use this one. It essentially looks like um, uh, looks like a dedicated character monitor. So if you want something that's a little prettier, uh, a little more devoted to your character than Neocom. Uh, this is a really nice looking app for actually keeping track of everything you have, um, especially more accounts you have, uh, mails and that kind of thing. It looks like a, a really snappy, uh, snappy one that's good to use and only a dollar. Um, I tend to think that, you know, if you, if you want more Eve apps to exist and you want them to approve, you have to be willing to buy them. You have to be willing to pay for the ads. Uh, so in my opinion, this is, uh, this is an investment kind of thing. And it is absolutely a fraction of what I've what I've spent on Eve in my last year of playing. I, I would still be giving a, uh, the author of Neocom money if I was really happy with his up, how his updates have been, but unfortunately I'm not. And I just send him quizzical emails like, "Why, why, why did why did you do this? Like, can you can you make it possible so that I can buy the version two skin? Like, can I?" <laughs> Just trying to give him ideas, trying to give him constructive feedback, but unfortunately, just never hear a thing. All right, and lastly, here I'll just link the uh, UniWiki page on the third party tools. Uh, this is kind of a complete list of what we have uh, so far. Um, it's you know, endlessly uh, could be updated. So it's something we really encourage people to add to if they find something that's interesting. Um, it's got references to, let's see, Eventats there, uh, you need mod, of course, uh, a few of the Mac tools as well, um, but, uh, 
Let's see. So in the mobile phone apps here, we have Neocom, of course, uh, Dust for that, uh, Aura for Android. All you Android users, I'm sure you're very fond of Aura, uh, from what I know of it. And also keeping track of which tools are discontinued. Uh, so that's a really nice uh, page to keep track of things. It's you know, not as probably not as current as uh, CCP's master list of third-party uh, sites, but a- anything you want to do, if you feel like adding your favorite to it, uh, feel free. You know, always welcome to keep the wiki up to date. <laughs> well, Aurora, if you, if you still have your uh, if you still have your forum account uh, active, you can edit the wiki even though you're not in the forum. Uh, but uh, hopefully, you've given that a try at least. All right, so that is essentially everything that I have installed on my iPad at the moment. Um, I could sort of go into more details as to, you know, why does a particular tool um, have an advantage to another? Um, I can go into, you know, what can you do in Neocom that you can't necessarily do in EFT, that kind of thing, um, or Python. But uh, for the most part, that's, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to cover. And... If anyone has any thoughts about uh, sort of basically programming new apps or if you want to get some more information on uh, how to do your own stuff, uh, we can definitely talk about that. Uh, in the chat channel here, we have uh, Churha Bay, who is very experienced in our, uh, in our API development community. I uh, had invited uh, Paul Arena as well, uh, who's one of our uh, assistant managers, uh, who does just absolutely phenomenal work. Um, in terms of uh, web tools and API stuff. Uh, probably wasn't able to make it today, but also a really good name to know if you're curious about actually doing any kind of development. So I will definitely open up uh, the classroom to anyone who wants to chatter about things. Um, feel free to stick around if you like. Uh, I don't have to go anywhere immediately. But um, I think officially I'll say that uh, the lecture part is closed and it's just open up for discussion at this point. So thanks for coming. Just a question. Do you, like, know of any apps or computer programs where you can input, like, the amount of minerals you need and it'll tell you uh, a rough estimate of what type and what kind of ore to, to mine? Uh, that's a really good one. Let me just check if uh, the Eve Mine app I have does that. Um, I will try and find that link. Uh, EveMine is specifically meant as a timer for uh, what you actually want um, to set your, your lasers for based on your skills, based on what you're mining. Um, so it's kind of an, an AFK facilitator. Uh, so that's really nice. That's the kind of tool that's really nice to have as a, as a mobile app. I uh, just want to see if Mentat has that feature that you're asking for. That would be my guess. All right, so in Mentat, I punched in 10,000 isogen, and it is telling me the amount of ore for processing based on all the kinds of ore that you want. So it's telling me I need uh, 26,000 M3 of Omber, uh, and it tells me the quantity count that that will be, uh, 33,000 of Kernite. So I think that's I think that's what you're looking for. I think Mentat would, would be the one that you want. Thank you. That is exactly what I've been looking for for my industry. Yeah, and I can see that choosing more flight only lists uh, only lists Mercoxit, so that would be the uh, it, it's it's giving you a full list of of exactly what you need to look at, so it's not giving you any extra information. What it doesn't seem to do is the other way around. It doesn't seem to actually give you uh, you know here's what I have of ore, what will it produce? But again, that's something that's is going to change quite a lot in Kronos, so maybe that's on their, on their list to do. I have a feeling I'm going to be using the, uh, the PI app uh, during my class tonight, uh, rather than paying full attention. But uh... no, It really is a good app. I, I, and I, I just have so much appreciation for developers with a good design sense, too. You know, that's, that's kind of what you expect as an iOS customer. You know, you expect people to have good design, but you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they have those skills or put that time in. But it just, it just makes it more enjoyable. You know, like Neocon version 2, like that UI, 
uh, you know, just very decorative, very enjoyable, very fast. You know, I, I really do credit that for keeping me in into the game as much as I was last summer. Overall, though, I think, you know, it's, I'd say a fairly small number of iOS apps. Uh, I would say that there's there's still a lot of room uh, to meet demand or to convert, like, really popular web tools into iOS apps that could work as well. Because um, people like me, like, you know, I, I, I don't have a smartphone. I don't want to pay a data plan uh, to be able to do this stuff. Uh, so I just you know, wait till I'm on Wi-Fi and you know, I, just, I just want to be able to do stuff uh, if I'm not connected as well. So that's that's a lot of value for me. Uh, question about uh, the quality of Epic on an iPad, and I'm, I currently have an iPad Mini, and I would say that it's designed uh, for the most part for it. Uh, the very smallest icons um, are a bit pixelated, uh, but the text is nice and sharp, and the pictures, like all the thumbnails and the graphics, are pretty nice. So it does it does seem to have the formats of of an of an iPhone app, but in terms of does it look good, the answer is yes, it definitely looks good. But I think the advantage of an iPad Mini is that you know you you essentially aren't stretching things out too too much um, as far as uh, having to use apps that are conversions. Uh, that brings to another point in terms of actually hunting for apps. Um, one of the tricky things is that uh, some of the apps you know, for Eve are listed as iPhone only. Um, so if you're doing a search in the iTunes store, uh, you may in fact not get the results. Uh, had that happen earlier today, you just have to actually toggle it to say, okay, I want to you know, search for both kinds um, rather than just iPad apps. So that's a little bit irritating, but that's a, that's a whole separate issue with the store. Mentad is actually one of those. Yeah, I can see it's kind of a kind of a tall form factor. Um, yeah, I, and I think I think with the screenshots, they try to update the screenshots as much as possible. Um, and uh, I'm starting to notice more. Uh, I guess the newest iPhone is is even taller, so I'm starting to notice the, uh, the perspective, the ratio change that way as well. All right, question from Padme in the chat. Um, comment, rather. Uh, use Vitality and Python on the MacBook. No wonder it bother, because Neocom seems to have it all. I, I, I agree. It, it has a tremendous number of features uh, combining both. I still use them all, uh, because there are times where I don't actually have my, uh, my iPad available uh, when I want to use it. Um, I think that uh, in terms of being able to plan out uh, a skill plan, I, I'm a little bit more used to Vitality. Uh, again, it's 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 not super super current in terms of how often the author, the author updates it, but in terms of uh, a close a close candidate to Evemon, it's it's done the job and it's a nice easy way to kind of keep track of what I'm doing. Um, and again, it's like I wish I could recommend Neocom more strongly now. Um, just the fact that the last two versions it has actually gone downhill that's really unfortunate. I, I really hope the author can turn it around. But uh, if, you, if you don't have Neocom now and you're starting with version 4, you might actually be a little bit frustrated. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a rose-colored glasses now for those of us that have been using it for about a year, I would say, uh, because it, it started out so strong and there was just, you know, just worked beautifully. I still think it works better than just about anything that's comparable to it on the iOS right now. I would say so, and I mean it has that it has that pedigree, and it has you know the, the features expanding every single time. Um, I just I just wish you would stop changing the UI if you could do that, and uh, you know, just focus on features and bug fixes and things. That'd be, that'd be so nice, but just hasn't worked out. So right now I'm just uh, adding the link dump and uh, any kind of screenshots I've taken to the form thread there. And that'll be bumped up to the top of the uh, class forum uh, fairly shortly. And then, yeah, if you have any other questions or comments on it, uh, feel free to post in the thread. Um, things like this that are kind of a brand new uh, class idea, kind of a kind of a, a open discussion kind of format. Um, any comments on that are appreciated. Um, 
just, just kind of, uh, you know, it, it's all kind of nerdy talk. But uh, when something comes up, it's like, oh, you know, nobody's really started this up before. We're basically creating a new, a new section in the class library. Um, feedback on that's really appreciated, and then that may inspire people to, you know, actually do an Android uh, discussion and, uh, you know, maybe something dedicated to web tools, which could take a very, very long time uh, to do well and discuss. So, uh, any comments you have on that are much appreciated. I have a question. So, um, have you heard about, I have a full-size uh, iPad. It's the new uh, Air one. Have you heard about using it as a second monitor? Because I travel a lot, and I use, I bring my MacBook with me. And for real estate-wise, um, it would be great to have another screen. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I have used uh, iPads for a second monitor. Um, there are a couple of different applications that are good for that. I don't think I have one installed right now, but I've, I've definitely done it, and for the most part, it's it's quite good. I was thinking of using it instead of a uh, in-game browser because my browser's in-game is so slow. Yeah, and, and partially that's by design, just for for safety reasons and other things. Um, yeah, if you have a full-size iPad with a laptop, that would probably be a, a fairly decent alternative to um, actually carrying anything else with you. Um, and the advantage, of course, like I have two monitors set up, but my one monitor is, uh, my, my, my secondary monitor is vertical because so much of what I do involves vertical orientation, so like web browsing, reading, uh, photos, that kind of thing. So the nice thing about being able to do that with your iPad is you can just rotate it to whatever is convenient for you. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, so I'll try to see if I can recognize the names of any of the, the apps for that. Yeah, I heard about it. I don't know what the actual apps are called to make it a monitor. Air display looks like a classic one. Okay, I'll link that in, uh, in lecture. And yeah, so that's a, that's a ten dollar app that used to have a free version. So it works with Mac and Windows, but those kinds of productivity apps, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of options, and the customers also bought as well. Uh, so trying any of those should be should be okay for you. 